Hey Matt, it's been too long. You need to do another Lumberjack horror movie. Nah man, it's been too long since you did a dumb versus movie. Bring that back. No, he's done like five of those. It's time to bring back Lumberjack Horror. The Lumberjack Horror isn't a staple of the channel. He's done like one of those. Exactly! Lumberjack Horror! Dumb versus movie! Lumberjack Horror! Dumb versus movie! Gentlemen, gentlemen, as my people say, why not both? There were some movies, terrible movies, movies so awful no one would touch. Then came a Matthew, sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew doesn't drag himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode, Lumber vs. Jack. Hello, Internet. I'm a lumberjack, and I'm okay. And today we're going to review basically the most on-brand film I could possibly review. First off, that name. Goofy vs. Movies are very much my shtick, but so are lumberjacks. Especially when the title's kind of a pun. And it's a fairly independent film, clearly being a passion project for director Jason LaCory. LaCory surprisingly has worked on quite a few low-budget affairs starting in 2004. Lumber vs. Jack was released in 2014, and LaCory actually has some releases since then. Apart from directing, LaCory would also star as the titular Jack Wood. Get it? Jack Wood. Rounding out the cast are some actors who aren't all that recognizable, though some of them have careers outside this film, which is a bit of a feat. Who I'm going to call the most famous is Debbie Rachan, who's been working in a lot of low-budget horror films, including a few trauma movies, as well as a full moon joint, Killjoy 2. In fact, she's so much the most famous person in this, her name is on the poster despite her being the sixth build and decidedly a secondary character. Writing off the star power of, uh, Tromeo and Juliet? Well, it did have Sean Gunn. So let's take a look and see if this film is worth Jack. And what else would this film start off with but blurry stock footage? Cheap stock footage is like an opening logo for a B-movie. It just sets the tone. Then we cut to our tough, muscular lead. Chopping wood that's clearly been burned so it's easier to chop. Oh god, they're tracking the chip in my brain again. Oh, oh, that was a sound effect in the movie. It's not much of a ringtone. Jack gets a call from his rich friend, Brad, who owns a paper company, and he chastises him because paper companies don't care about the forest. Paper companies care immensely about the forest. It's where all their profits come from. The leading cause of deforestation is actually cattle farms. But, uh, what's an environmental film without a little bit of misinformation? I mean, sure, you could do your research, but if you're making an environmental film, you're doing it because it's no effort. And then we get these strange, mystical opening credits that don't really relate to the film and almost certainly came pre-installed with iMovie. Are you sure this one's old enough? It looks rather young. No, it doesn't really matter with these super trees. You hear that? You do if you've got headphones on. They've got all of the audio track to the left channel. This is a problem I learned how to fix in my second year at college. That's if you even have to fix it. The microphone I use records in mono. They did get the sound effects and music on both audio channels, though. Anyways, the paper company has developed a super tree that grows twice as fast as a normal tree, and it kills people. I expected a big executive like you to, uh, have a nicer place. <laughs> oh, Jack. I do. Downtown. Top floor of the building. View the entire city. Huh? That all sounds nice, so why this place? The other place is nice, but... We couldn't afford to film there. But what's it have to do with Jim? She was there. I felt better saying that over on this side of the room. 
So here they reinforce the idea that this company plants super trees and kinda goes into more detail. Almost like we didn't need that exposition just a minute ago. You're crazy. And arachnid genes for resilience. Bugs. You mix trees with bugs. Ah, gee, these guys talk with their hands more than I do. So people have just been disappearing in that area, including Jack's ex-wife, Jill. Ooh. Who helped develop the super trees, and now Jack has to save them. And look at that, Von Trier must have been a huge fan of this film. Except this film is way more entertaining than anything Von Trier's done. Yeah, but fuck Von Trier, I want to check out Xena Falls. Which is a good name, because Lucy Lawless makes me wet. <laughs> so I don't really know what's going on in this scene. I think it's a flashback or something. Jack's working at some kind of nature camp with this scientist lady. Big ass gooey spiders. Mm, quite the nature lover. And then it cuts to this. No reason. <laughs> so Jack gets taken to the place where Jill's team disappeared, and it looks like they put up a fight, but against what? Your four military trained security guys missed. Don't you watch cable movies? Those guys miss all the time. This isn't some cable movie, Brad. Yeah, a cable movie wouldn't look this cheap. Interdisposable teen girls A and B. A likes the outdoors, but B hates it, so a leaf bites her. I I'm not exaggerating. I it almost looks like it's a bite. A leaf bit me? <laughs> that was mighty odd. That was mighty odd? A vine growled at you. If anything growls at you, especially something you can't see, you yell, oh shit, and you get out of there. You don't stand around going, huh, how quaint. Something growled at me. I wonder what it was. Help! What are you doing? They're biting me! Stop! Sometimes characters deserve to die. Oh, and it turns out they were trespassing, too. The sooner these idiots die, the better. One of them survives. Oh, oh no. Don't, don't go poking open scabs. You take these two back to the hotel, and I'll keep going with the job. Hey, Jack. The microphone's already pretty shitty. Don't whisper. I can't hear you. Honestly, I'm pretty sure they're using the mic built into the camera. That's why it's louder when it's closer to people and quieter when it's further away. Now, to be fair, I use the microphone in my camera from time to time, but, uh, I film, like, five feet away from my face, and also I know how to balance my audio in post. And also, I'm a free YouTube channel, not a full-length feature film. Anyways, the rich guy calls security to come get the girls, but, uh-oh, he's trying to cover something up. Also, why is that A capitalized? It's a movie, just send another text if you made a typo. Sure is odd she got attacked on her whole face, but only got cuts in two places. You look like you could be kinda pretty underneath all those bandages. All those bandages? There's two of them! Anyway, security tries to shoot them, but some vines break his arm. So we get another, is this a flashback? Maybe some type of indication that it isn't happening with the events of the story other than a cut? There's not even a segue, they just seem to be thrown in at random. Anyways, Jack and presumably Jill get the news that Jack is sterile, so they can't have kids. Except they already built a swing set, clearly meant for kids. That is, counting your chickens before they hatch, and not even in a metaphorical sense. Flash forward, and Jack's worried about the girls, and, um... Is there just a permanent grocery list over there? Did he intend to have a sign made, but accidentally handed the guy his grocery list instead of what he wanted written on the sign, and then hung it up anyways? Look, we got really close to finding Jill and the others today. No, you fucking didn't! You didn't do anything today! You just found the spot they disappeared, then harassed some girls! Regardless, I'd like to find her. She has all of my Eagle CDs. Is that a... joke? Work on your timing. 
Also, how many Eagles CDs could you own? They have like two good songs. You hear the car, so we must be close. Yeah, but that could be a brook or a stream. And we're back to one audio channel. Close. Yeah, but I could be a brook or a stream. You know what? My brother was an Eagle Scout. I can build a fire. Because fire building skills are hereditary. Boy, that's a fucking callback. I made that same joke in my very second episode, Chopping Mall, when a girl insinuates she can shoot a gun well because her dad was in the military. Of course, they don't start a fire because that would make the trees angry. And you want to talk about the worst security guys ever? They point the flashlights directly at the girls, twice, and still don't see them. Bad guys only miss in cheap cable movies. <laughs> <laughs> I have no joke, I just wanted you to see that. Wait, just one scene ago they said they were stealing a jeep. All I know is that somewhere out here is an unattended jeep. That's clearly not a jeep. You could have just said SUV and this wouldn't be a problem. That has to be a joke, right? They knew what they were doing. I can't even give them shit for that. I can give them shit for this horrible audio, though. Who? The what? Oh my god. And then the trees eat their not a jeep. The next morning, or maybe this is a flashback, I can't fucking tell, someone cosplaying as Abby from NCIS shows up to... house clean? Where do I sign up for goth house cleaning? You think that's a real thing? I might have just hit the next million dollar idea. Jack goes off with Sheila, an entomologist, to look at bugs or some shit, and the goth chick's a cam girl. That, uh, I don't even have words for that. Apparently she took the job because Jack has high-speed internet at this remote cabin in the woods. But she's on the back porch. Surely there's better Wi-Fi inside. It looks like the treehouse at your place. Mmm, that's good audio. You get rid of background noise through a noise reduction process, but the louder the background noise is, the worse your audio is going to sound. So something really loud, like say a car engine, is gonna make your audio sound really echoey and tinny. Uh, the solution to this is to just dub your lines in later, but true auteur Jason LaCory, who made 11 films before this, didn't know that. Anyways, Sheila helped Jill make the super trees using bug DNA, and Jack thinks that means they can move and defend themselves. Sure, why not? Goth Cleaning throws a broom at some leaves, and that means they're gonna attack her. But... Leaves aren't attached to the trees. My fingernails won't fight people off after I've clipped them. How much of these trees are alive? Secondarily, really, hitting them with a broomstick was an attack? What about stepping on them? Wouldn't that be more painful? Also, she was streaming from a GoPro that wasn't even plugged into the computer. This is the worst streaming setup ever. That is a motley looking crew. Oh come on, they're not even in the shot. You could have better audio. No, please, no, no, ah! <laughs> That's in the movie, that's not a joke. That's the type of thing you see in a fake movie within a movie. <laughs> it's fucking beautiful. A plus. People would probably save them as quick as they'd shoot us. Shit. What? Well, I just remember that people are trying to kill us. How do you forget that? And one of the security guards who died the night before is growing bark on him? At least I assume that's what that is. The girls come across some security guards acting exactly like real people do, and they drop a cigarette, starting a fire. Wait, were those elephant noises? 
Did they add elephant DNA to the bug DNA? They die, but the girls get off scot-free. Jack and the bug girl find a spider web because the trees are spiders? The trees attack Jack, confirming his suspicion that the trees are deadly. And then Sheila starts shooting at him. Hey, those vines are pretty thin and Jack is a big target. You didn't think this through. Luckily, she doesn't shoot him and they escape, running into the girls. What are you doing here? Why didn't you go to the hospital? Which, by the way, how are you healing up? Why do you ask so many questions without waiting for an answer? Whoa, was that an actual transition into that flashback? Can you even do that? The flashback is how the paper corp radiated the trees, making all the men who work for them sterile. The world is overpopulated anyway! That was always my rationale. Shut up, Deadeye Eddie, you're not a character anymore. Back in the present, that dead security guy is alive and turning into a tree. Jack and his friends try to hide in the shed, but one of the girls gets grabbed by a tree, even though it's been clearly established trees only attack when provoked. Well, whatever, she lasted 40 minutes longer than I thought she should. They run into Brad, who explains that they had to mutate the trees even further to get them to spread. This is all about money? My best friend is dead so that you can make more money? Not just more money. Millions more! Spaceballs joke! That's a Spaceballs joke, you dirty hacks! So Jack picks up a real axe and a cardboard machete. Maybe it's not the best idea to attack the creatures known for only attacking when provoked. What the fuck was Brad supposed to do? You took both weapons! They theorize that there's one hive mind to the plants based on no particular evidence, and decide if they can find it, they can burn it alive. I'll buy in bulk. We've got gasoline in the garage. We can get there through the basement. Ow. I'll meet you guys down there. That was the same shot! How did you mess up the audio? Anyway, Jack goes to save the best character while Brad and the girls go to the garage. I'll leave the TV on for you. Oh, you'll love this guy. I'm planning on hanging with him again, are you? Yeah, well, people kill this afternoon. What? Why? Really? A sign? You couldn't find it in the budget to make a real sign? And then, uh... <laughs> you guys were better off waving sticks in front of the camera. Is that a motherfucking split screen? That guy's in a costume! Why would you ever split screen that? <sighs> well, as long as you don't take down my videos, you'll still be my favorite director to use shitty split screen. Thanks, Yahari! And then they face the mother. Jody! <laughs> Bitch, your mouth was open at the beginning of that shot. There's this shot, which has no context, because these are the first and last we see of this creature. And rightfully so, they look hilarious. They free the other girl and meet the queen, who shoots silly string and eats Brad. The rest of them make it out alive and burn down the killer forest. At least I assume that's what this effect is trying to convey. Should we tell them about the pumpkins? What about the pumpkins? No, really, guys, what about the pumpkins? What about the pumpkins? Tell me about the pumpkins, girls. <laughs> That's right, fucking sequel bait. And unlike most sequel bait, these idiots followed through. But that's a story for another day. As for Lumber vs. Jack, they turned one scene from Evil Dead into an hour and a half movie. Which was pretty funny. Obviously there's a lot of problems with this film. It's cheaply made to start, it's full of plot holes, bad dialogue, jokes that don't land, and of course some of the worst audio I've ever heard in film. But 
it is pretty funny. I mean, yeah, I love these no-budget horror films with insane plots. If you've got some friends over to watch bad movies, this is a great one to watch. There's funnier bad movies out there, but this one is just silly enough to enjoy. And hey, unlike the other Versus movies I've looked at, Lumber vs. Jack is kind of an appropriate title. Anyways, until next time, I'm Matt, and that concludes our 68th episode. Wait, our 68th episode? That means... You better make me a character again or I swear I'll kill you. You can't murder me if you're no longer a character. I am God of this domain.